Hi, thank you Shibhumi for this opportunity to speak at your virtual summit 2020. We are proud partner of Shibhumi for last three years. Today our topic is scale up, scaling up using data centric automation. I would like to also introduce my co-speaker Simon Manta. He has recently joined us on our customer advisory board. He used to be a CEO for HSBC India, then GM Hubs for ANZ Bank, and then uh, recently he was CEO of Bank of Nodia in Scott Home. Uh, we are very honored that he is mentoring us in our journey for the next phase of our growth. Um, in 2014, we got an opportunity to work with Simon and uh, when he was at ANZ Bank and we did our first engagement in 2014 on RPA and things have changed in the last, last six years. I will also uh, ask Simon to introduce when he started his session. We have divided the current session into three parts. Uh, what is data centric automation? How can we scale it up? And why we should scale it up? Um, we about minefields. Uh, we have been uh, mentioned and recognized by Gartner, IDC. Deloitte has ranked us as the fastest growing company in Australia in top twenty in you know, 2017, and we are covered by HFS. We were ranked number two globally as a voice of uh, customer. We feel proud, and I'm very proud of my team and our clients who has given this opportunity to achieve all these recognitions. We have various products and services in the RPA and international uh, and intelligent automation and moving to next phase of our growth into hyper automation. Of course, they are on our website. Uh, you can see on the slide what we offer. And uh, let's focus on today's session, which is uh, scaling up uh, automation, scaling up your automation uh, using data centric approach. So first of all, uh, what is, uh, you know, how what is data centric automation how the enterprises are moving to the next level how they're becoming more intelligent to achieve any data centric automation at a macro level the organization need to move the to the cxos the strategy to adapt data adopt data in their uh, processing of uh, any data inside the organization uh, what i mean by that currently if you look at uh, we have RPA, uh, BPM, which has, uh, which is covering most of the transactions in the lower end of the pyramid. And as we go up, we have less and less transactions. But going forward, the automation or data centric approach involves that we have more MIS function and less of transactions based processing, just as uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable, GL, HR, onboarding, which are currently part of uh, current process based uh, automation, how we can convert them to more data driven, intelligent automation. If you look at, uh, uh, there's a, there are different definitions of scaling up and what we have defined as scaling up, it means both horizontally and vertically. Horizontally, it means from back office to the middle office to front office, from more uh, um, transaction routine based process like AR, AP, GL to more strategic, more um, uh, information-based or data-based processes in the front office where you have less transactions, but each value of each transaction goes up. And RPA, uh, machine learning, AI, conversational AI, it will all become part of the hyper automation journey for an organization. So you can look at this graph, it is going both vertically and horizontally. And you can also see the importance of data increases as you move from back office to the front office or when you start using RPA to conversational AI or machine learning or um, um, AI. Uh, it doesn't mean that we talk, the importance of data is less in RPA. It is there, but it is not used to automate the process. The importance means how we are using it for the automation as we progress in our journey from RPA to machine learning to AI to conversational AI. Uh, current state of automation, we all know it is most, mostly task oriented. What I mean by that is we are automating a task or a sequence of tasks 
or sequence of activities. We are not fully automating a, a full end-to-end uh, -end process uh, in most of the cases. Uh, if, you, if you look at why it is not scaling up the current automation, the current uh, activity-based automation, because you can't replicate that to the other geographies or other divisions because the process change. There is a variance in the process. That's why the scaling up becomes a bit of a issue. Um, data is also very uh, fragmented in activity-based automation. You can see that the automations are not very robust or it can't be replicated in other geographies, geographies because data which we are using in one geography or one uh, department is not same in the other department or other geography, which again hinders the scaling up of the automation. And secondly, or thirdly, uh, we are reusing, we are not able to reuse the data in the current um, RPA, RPA state. The RPA tools are becoming smarter, but the data consumption is again dependent upon other applications like Tableau, uh, R or Hadoop, which are not currently getting consumed within RPA tool as yet. And of course, uh, the bottlenecks, as we know, uh, in the current RPA journey, the process or the activities are very, very driven by each department. So it is difficult to automate and replicate that to the other department. And there are different bottlenecks in different departments. So the scaling up becomes a hindrance. So now I would like to invite Simon to explain why we require data centric automation and how we can achieve it. Over to you, Simon. Thank you, Moit. Really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about data centric automation, I think it's good to start about why is data becoming so much more important for enterprises more widely? When we look at what's happening in the marketplace, we see that enterprises are realizing that with data, they can power their automation and analytics engines in a much better way than what they could do otherwise. And th this focus on data ensures that you get better accu accuracy in what you do. Uh, you, with a more focused data strat uh, strategy, you have more confidence in the data you have. And of course, data operate can operate at data speed. So you can actually then deal with things that are much faster pace and in much higher volume than what you could do otherwise. And uh, it enables self-service to happen much easier and faster. And it can all be on demand. And, and we see this in the way uh, truly data-driven companies operate. They operate with much more focus towards the customer in terms of using the data the customer gives to not only do the work, but also to give insights about what the customer intended. And I think the best example here is what Google is doing when you search for a new car. One thing is it will give you the feedback you look for, the search results. But it also ensure that all its marketing uh, uh, subscribers are aware that you might be interested in a new car and you will get spammed nonstop after that. But that is driven by the data. You know, so it, by focusing on data, you get to a very different position than what you would do if you were just looking at the transaction. And then it's quite interesting to see that when we're talking about current automation topics, a lot of those automation topics is very much driven around the process. And that's where the document uh, comes in, in that we have process automation happening on one with one focus area, and then we have the enterprise transformation uh, happening based on data. So what we have been looking at is really, how do you bridge this? How do you make it possible for both us to get the efficiency and, uh, and the drive which gets from automation? And how do we leverage and build on the data uh, in, uh, investments the enterprise has been doing before? And how do we make this really work? And that's, that's really the, at the heart of data-centric automation. So why focusing on data uh, in terms of automation? I, I think there's many reasons for that. Um, 
but I think one of the strongest elements here is that it makes it easier and faster to improve the way you service customers. Uh, and why is that? It's because what customers want, what they're asking for, typically is quite a stable commodity uh, and is stable across industries and across uh, countries and customer segments. I've lost my PIN is a normal request in all banks worldwide. And, and there will be similar things in power industries, in, in hotels, in, in everywhere. There, there's an alignment around the what, which is, enables you to, to really get a, a different scale to it across uh, your, your enterprise. Also, a lot of that, those requests, are uh, the data is the same across processes. So actually by having more focus on which data it is we are using, you can actually identify similar activities, even if they are in completely different processes. And thirdly, you know, since you can actually leverage your most likely your existing investments in uh, big data tools, uh, you can actually get a lot of uh, cost savings from this. And this element all together, you know, when we're looking at this, it adds up to really big benefits for the enterprise in terms of speed, in terms of consistency, in terms of data quality. And we see currently a lot of areas where things are disconnected, that the processes are disconnected from the data, which is disconnected from the systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you look, if you are thinking currently thinking about process automating your processes in the enterprise one by one, I think it's worth thinking how many processes do you really have? How many systems do you have? How many processes do you have? And how often do they change? You should be a pretty small company before that is not becoming unmanageable. So what we see is that there's a new thinking required and I think that that thinking in the rest of the enterprise seems to be data-driven. We are arguing it should also be data-driven within your automation strategies. So start. let's look a little bit of what are the differences between activity-centric and data-centric. Um, because, of course, a lot of things are the same. We are automating processes. That's what we want to do. But we're doing it a little bit differently. So if you look at the focus for activity centric is, well, we get into a room, we put some uh, flow charts on the, uh, on the walls. We, we map out the process, process step one by one. We create swim lanes, all this, the normal way. It's, it's all about activities. And in that setup, we often find later on that it's the same process steps being done again and again within even within the same process that typically things like data validation etc cetera, etc cetera, because you cannot be sure that what you're getting from step the step before you is actually the right one so you kept you add on controls and checks um, on a data centric approach we're still looking at the processes but we are not thinking so much about what do they do we, we, we say which data are they consuming, which data is they, are they generating, and how do we get the quality on that data, and where do we find that data the easiest way possible. So that kind of thinking, may, uh, um, and of course, uh, is easier, and of course, it it's also enables you to look at, have I access to this data in another process? It drives you to think through different processes, because you're data oriented. Of course, as soon as you're activity focused, you are only focused on your process. Um, another element here is that whilst what we are focusing on typically in a process is what is the what are the humans doing? Um, because we are wanting to automate out what the humans are doing. And therefore we would like to have automation processes which are smart as our humans and can work as our humans. And that, of course, takes us to some fantastic vendors uh, who delivers really good solutions for this. However, if you're looking at data, it's not so much about those vendors. It's about 
where do we get hold of this data? And it's drives us to a different uh, data <clears throat> set than what we have for uh, or a different set of vendors potentially. If you look at <clears throat> the the way we prefer integration to happen, you know, with our activity centric, we're following the human. It's again, it's the RPA toolset, which you know works. By the way, it's I'm not negative that in any way sense. But if you're looking at data, then you're really about how do I push this data onto things which can be done automatically, and it might be API or APIs. Um, and or it could be uh, it could be other file based transfers etc. Um, and if you look at the integration approaches, we are saying that with RPA or with traditional ways, we would like the smartness to sit in the process step, whilst in a, in a typical kind of um, data driven organization, you will say. I want to have dumb pipes, smart endpoints. So you will put all the complexity in, in the endpoint who manages this. Um, we, we are focusing on data as an architecture. Um, we are not looking necessarily at the, uh, the outcome of our process is in the first step, you know, that the activity is done in, uh, in an activity-centric automation. In a data-centric automation, it's do we have the data which enables us to give it to APIs or robots or whatever to get it done? So, so it's about data set creation rather than process generation. And, um, and, and the element here as well is how do we create those data sets, feed them to robots, we don't care, but it's all about the data sets. And this enables us to actually, since we are looking at data, we can look at, have we done this before? What did you do last time, etc. So that learning element is, uh, is much easier in data centricity. And, and the data sets created for one element can, how it can be reused quite a lot in another activity. And we'll give an example of that one. And, uh, and we'll come to the example a bit later. So, but I think that there, there are some similarities. We're using a set of tool sets, some kind of the similar tool set in all cases, but the way we focus is different. So let's think a little bit about an example. So I, I think take something which we all know about and know, of course, which is to you want some credit from your financial institution to buy your new car, a new home, whatever. And uh, typically in a process centric dimension, you will follow uh, that process from, uh, from channels through the process flows you have. To, to the outcomes for the customer. But if you think a little bit more about it, you know, an, a, a current account is very similar to an overdraft account, which is a very similar to a credit card account, which is very similar to an unsecured loan account, which is very similar to a mortgage account, which is very similar to a guarantee. There's a lot of similarities in these areas. But typically, when we look at it from a process-centric way, we don't see those. But if you look at the data, then it's very obvious that the data is the same. And here we could start thinking about a setup where we're saying that the data is coming in from different, come from a branch, could come from you doing something with mobile, can come from wherever, whichever channel you're operating on. There's a request, there's a what from the customer. Then you can take that through data-centric automation and start saying which piece of data is it which is required at which step. And again, no, you, you, you don't necessarily need to think about where, what type of product is this because you don't really care. You care about the data sets you're creating. So if you want security in your process, well, then you need to trigger the, the, the pod which brings the data for security and makes decisioning around uh, security. And then, uh, of course, then you have the issue is the real world is process oriented because that's how we built it currently in, in our current structure. So the execution elements needs then to go through that way. But the humans are not in the execution. The execution is being driven 
by automation. And therefore, you can ensure that the quality is right. You, you take out all the exceptions because all the exceptions are being left with the humans in the middle. Or I'm saying humans, but as you can see, it might be humans. It might be some, you're looking up some data from somewhere else. You know, you might be looking up some valuation from a third party valuer or wherever. Or it might be some machine learning, which says based on what you did before, this is what you did here. So how do we create those data sets in an easy way? and then get them automated delivery. So we have been talking about how do you actually, what's the benefit of data centric uh, automation? That we give an example where we illustrate that, you know, that this actually can have some tremendous reorganizational structure dimensions in your uh, enterprise. And then the, a natural issue is how do you get started? And one of the elements we have been talking about is uh, if you really want to step into data-centric automation at scale, then there are quite a lot of elements which need to be put in place. And a lot of that you might already have somewhere in your enterprise because it's about how do you go on your data, how do you focus on data, how do you ensure that you know what validations are relevant for the data, uh, data you're processing. Um, there might be issues here around how do you uh, define up your, how, do you, are you aware of your automation parts which you have already? So what's the alternative to doing it either manual or through, uh, through RPA? Is the other APIs available, other file-based other solutions available? Um, what can you do? So th there's a lot of what I call librarian work. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that organize yourself for automation using data. Um, and this element is something we've been working on, you know, is basically how do we structure this so that actually you can get this working at scale, working throughout your enterprise in a, in a good way, uh, which really enables you to get these benefits. And I will not go through this in, in detail. There is a lot in there, uh, but I think there is a difference here, uh, which is that a lot of these uh, elements can be started quite easily and your willingness to, uh, you know, you can actually dip your toe into this without doing massive changes. Because in many cases, or uh, you, you have all the tools you need, um, you need to organize a bit different, think a bit different. And then this, this is not hard to do, despite it being very efficient. So to go a little bit more detail, you know, what can you do? What could you do straight out here? I, I, we made this uh, fairly simple little wheel. So the first element is, do you know how the technology department are automating their parts? Because very often we see that uh, the process automations is, is supporting uh, an, a partly automated process already. So what is it they have automated and how did they do it? And which data did they need or which data do they need to really do that again? Because, so that's element is, how do you actually understand all the automation parts which exist around you? Um, then it's about how do you create an thinking that where you actually say that data is important, so therefore I need to track them. I need to understand which data my automation routines are using. I need to understand what validation it is, or what kind of metadata is it which sits around this data. Um, then when you have, you understand your alternatives for automation parts, you know which data you have, then it's about how do I collect this data? How do I collect the data required to feed my robots, if that's what you go, or your API sets or whatever? Because no, that is what you want to do. And then when you're starting looking at data, the, the key element here is we want to reuse existing data. We don't want to always have the data keyed in again and again and again. Um, uh, we want to make sure that what data we have is being reused. So therefore, if your current automation method is built on Excel, well, then most likely that's a bit more challenging because keeping that, uh, keeping data history there is, is challenging. And especially if you want to make sure that it's consistent. And um, 
therefore, you know, to, to typical to, uh, elements you need is a little bit more heavy lifted, uh, lifting on, on the data side, a little bit more uh, programming tools uh, potentially in that space. Uh, typically speaking with your big data or your data analytics unit uh, to kind of figure out where to put it and where to take it from. Then a key element here is that RPA is an enabler. RPA is an interface just like any other interface. So you can use your existing RPA investment uh, even more potentially. Um, but, but no, it's an executor. It's, an in, it's not a doer. Um, it, it's about completing those data sets onto the, the tool sets. And it might be that you don't go, go through the screens. You might use your RPA tool set as a gateway to your APIs. And then of course, the biggest element here is that you need to stop thinking about your, uh, your enterprise as a collection of processes. You need to think about it as a set of data and data enabled routines. So it's all about data. And, and that is a big change when people are all driven by flow, uh, flow charge and we all gone from that school. Uh, uh, but it's unfortunately, it's a bit out, out of date these days. So I'm delighted to work with uh, Mindfields on this. I think that they have done some fantastic work in the past. And uh, I think this is a very interesting area, which are true ability to transform the way we do operations at scale. We are looking for a future where our people don't touch our systems, they create the data sets. And I, I like, uh, I read a book about Google's uh, system reliability engineering. And there they say, if one of their employees are touching their systems, they will consider it a bug. I think we uh, are doing high scale automation. We also need to think the same, same way that our people should not touch our systems. That's the job for robots or APIs. Our people is there to validate data sets so that they, we can or create the data sets so we can get them uh, working. So Mohit, back to you. Really appreciated the, this opportunity. It's a really fascinating area. Thank you for your interest. Hi, thank you, Simon, for your valuable insights. Uh, really appreciate your experience and guidance in mentoring us on how our clients can scale up using database or data centric automation. You have discussed uh, why we need to move uh, to data centric automation and uh, how we can do it using our framework, which we, are, which we have designed. Uh, and also there are seven steps on how to scale your automation journey using data, which we have uh, discussed in our last slide. Now, it is very important for us to understand or for yourself to understand where you are in your journey and how can we help you to move to the next level of your automation journey using data. So there are seven steps as mentioned in the slide and we are here to help you to uh, transit from currently process centric automation to data centric automation. Uh, feel free to approach us or contact us uh, directly or through Shibumi and we are there to guide you on how can we assist you for this transition. Uh, how can we do a workshop with you? How can we diagnose where you are currently and where you want to go? And what steps you need to enhance your framework for automation? Again, thank you Shibumi for this opportunity to present at your virtual summit 2020 and looking forward to strengthen our partnership with you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.